So here is the drop idea thus far. <laughs> Yo, what is up guys? Welcome to another Shamshir Sound video. My name is Ali Nadam, and today we're gonna be looking at another look at the Big Room track from Scratch episode two. Today we're gonna look more at the drop and maybe look at the break, but we really wanna spice up the drop more. I had a quick listen and uh, some of the stuff needs some leveling. I also wanna make the kick a bit more interesting. So we'll start with a demo and uh, we're gonna make this video just about an hour long. So I'm gonna start a timer just so that the video doesn't get too out of control and it's a bit easier to digest. So let's play this back. So it's kind of this AB kind of drop going on, but I feel like the kick needs a bit more, um, a little bit more of like a punch. The kick is like a bit too wooden like for me i don't know it sounds a bit cardboard kind of needs like a, a top kick or something on top of it so uh, i'm going to go into the either the jackson vega packs or the cashmere pack and i'm going to look for a top kick and maybe put like a drop clap as well okay so let's see top now top kicks do you need to EQ them? It's really up to you. Uh, find the nice level in the in the mix, and maybe if you want, cut out some of the lows, but we have to find it to taste. So I'm also going to put a fruity soft clipper on the lead and I think I'm going to do the same for the kick in the body just so I can get a bit more control over them. Let's go wide with this. So this is the kick. I'm not sure if I'll keep this uh, extra reverb. I'm going to turn it off. I'm just a uh, little tweaked the kick because it had a little bit of a, it had a bit of this, that little extra tail. I didn't want it. So 
tweaked it to taste and I think I'm gonna cut out a bit of the lows. <laughs> So what we did there was just uh, control the lead a bit more. Uh, I switched the lead from bright to fat in Supercharger, introduced a little bit of compression, uh, cut out a bit of the lows and uh, just a little bit of the boost. It's a little bit boost here, but before it, or sorry, after it, I guess, yeah. After it, we did a little low, low cut around 150 hertz. Um, and the soft clip is just to kind of keep a little bit of control but I still feel like it needs some girth and I'm going to either put like a saw lead underneath this, maybe playing the same note. Um, I'm not completely satisfied with the way this MIDI sounds. So anytime you're having doubts about the MIDI, always feel free to just try it. So just copy it, make this unique. And let's see if maybe we can come up with something else. Uh, we're working in the key of F, so let's just try out something. Uh, when we do that, we're going to have to be mindful of the bass. So we'll disable this. Yeah, I'll just keep it going like one note as we decide what we're going to do for the MIDI. just like that you can quickly change the vibe i like this vibe uh i kind of want to make the bass more like serious you know uh this it sounds cool but it's a bit uh, i don't like the direction i don't like the story it's kind of telling so i'm gonna make this unique 
Uh, I'm going to go down in base. So we got to decide what we want to do with base. I think I'm going to stay F sharp. experimentation but taking it one note at a time helps so much <laughs> Let's just turn this into like a spicy, spicy lead. Uh, it reminds me of F Tampa. Um, kind of like the older spinning big room tracks, but we're going to have to decide here what the main four bar, this bass line is going to really control the mood of the track. see if I can wobble this uh, bass because the bass has a lot going on I'm probably gonna do it externally so a lot of times you got to decide because we have weird glide going on here I don't want to mess with the glide so I'd rather just do something with this and create my own fluctuation using the channel pitch and we'll do it like every bar kind of want to make it go up like ooh, ooh, ooh. Line like extended.
now that we have a cool baseline, we can keep experimenting. I'm someone that keeps loving to experiment with midis. So it's it's always a good idea because, you, you know, that's how you, the ideas come to mind is you got to just do persistency and then you struck something that sounds really cool. <laughs> See if we can make this bass a bit deeper. Um, I'm just gonna roll off some of the highs. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,
so same thing when you're making progress uh, and you have kind of like a vibe make unique make unique this is all about what we can do with this melody <laughs> I think I know what I want to do now. Um, I kind of like the way it resolves here, but I think I might just do it like four bar normal F in like this. <laughs> Thank you. 
gonna to really make this fat i really love the fruity fast lp something about it it's not like a super deep filter but it just sounds very pleasing and the default resonance actually sounds pretty good you could turn it up a bit but it doesn't lose too much sparkle but it can really i think i've made some really sick stuff all throughout music using uh, automations of this and i haven't been using it lately but i'm gonna try it out on the kick so what i'm gonna do on the kick on the uh, send that the kick and the bass are going to i'm gonna put it right at the end and i'm going to do it like so something where maybe i can have like a tail and then come back to normal experiment mixing um harmonics like sometimes if you go down like go up a seventh instead of zero like what i mean is if you go up to like this sometimes it can sound really cool that seventh harmonic can sound really dope whether it be in a bass or a lead and if you go reverse because if you go up to 12 now you've gone up one octave but you, what you can do is if you're going zero you want to go back go minus five right that's the same thing that's the same thing as going in the upwards direction because then if you go plus seven right you're going to arrive there so in either direction you can really add a bit of even even a little bit of detune can sometimes help but you always just got to experiment see what works uh this i think the reason why it needs a lot of help is because it's just it's one voice and um you know sometimes when you're working with one voice you really need to process a lot and really bring out the power out of the sound <laughs>
also going to put OTT uh, right at the end, like right before Soft Clipper. I want to mix it very slight, like very little. See if I can just bring it a little bit more kick out of this lead. try is I'm going to turn off the f fast LP on the kick mix but I'm going to turn it on for just the body see how that affects it and just link it to the same so there we go this it's tightening the base and you can see if you do like an extreme you can really make it melbourne bouncy but i don't want to do that just because of the nature of the kick so i really like this though i'm going to keep this on um and what i can do is you can do the inverse actually like what you can do is go to the normal fruity fast lp right um what I mean is, let's actually, let's delete this. Let's put one on the kick, but all it'll do really is it'll just act as like a volume gate. You know, you can use filter, not just for just the sake of filter, but you could almost make it like it's a side chain, you know, not truly because it's still gonna have some frequency in this one, but you could theoretically, you know, do something like this, you know, or depending on how aggressive you wanna get to really fine tune your side chain, so your sidechain can really be fine-tuned by tweaking those volume envelopes so you can curve out space for the kick, but then roll off space for the bass. So let's see how this turns out. It might work, so even without it, it'll be still be good, but if we can get this bass like a bit crispier, it's already sounding a bit better with the top kick, so as as we add more percussion, I think it'll get it'll get there. Um, 
same thing for this one, I think. I think all three. Okay, so this one, this is like one top kick that we have. Um, I think there's a couple top kicks actually. We got this kick. So that's the kick. And we have this. I think I'm going to put them both to the same fruity fast LP just because I, th I just want to see what happens when I kind of glue them together. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to link them to the last one, kick cut off. Same with this one, kick cut off. Cause that might give some punchiness. It might not be good, but let's see. I like it, so let's keep it. So now we have a top kick that we like. And we have this like top kick noise, I guess. Whatever you want to call that. Let's move those there. And the lead is sounding cool. I like it. It's sounding more like Melbourne bouncy. It's reminding me of uh, TJR. And so I, I really like the way that this is going. <laughs>
now we look at layering. I think I'm going to push the video a bit longer, about hour 30. I'm going to look at layering this because it's really, it's changed, but I love the direction that this is going. I love the baseline. It's, it's a lot tighter. The lead is a lot more profound. And I think this is a much better direction, much more confident with this, but we got to layer this and we got to create some interesting stuff around it. So I'm going to create like a saw stab at the beginning, ba ba ba, just just kind of reinforce the bass line that's playing. I want to bring in a saw. cool chords have come up some cool chord ideas came from this but i'm going to continue with the original plan but i will bring that chord in i think with like a choir or something something in the back more <laughs> Baseline idea has emerged. 
Let's try it out real quick. Da -da. for experimenting but let's just try it out just following the chord let's see what happens <laughs> call this new drop and I'll make variations of it um, so here I'm gonna do like da -da 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 -da.
rotating the phase is a great way to maintain one type of sound but like manipulate it in conjunction with the modulation oscillator it brings it kind of in the center but when you use it with the modulation oscillator we can get some cool results a little bit of wobble maybe you can work. Just like that, you can have different sounds, you know? I didn't go into this wanting to do a wobble, but I always thought about Ollie James and how he had, uses wobbles to kind of give more groove to his track. So you got to try out things, guys, you know? That's how we always come to some cool ideas, just experiment. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
something cool, I'm going to do the random oscillator. So what we're going to do is we're going to get this, this thing out of the way. So I'm going to sidechain compress this guy. I'm going to move him with alt, the arrow keys. I'm going to call it like stab because I don't know what it'll be for now. But I definitely do want this sidechain compressing it. So I'm going to put fab filter pro C. Um, go into the settings, processing, stereo sidechain from the lead mix. And we're going to turn off the auto gain and turn on external sidechain. I'm going to make it like a hard knee and I want it to just duck that stab when, so that the lead can breathe so that the stab is not taking away from the lead.
a side like a sidechain thing with the reverb using fruity pre p controller i'm gonna try it out with the mix amount this might sound weird but let's see what it's like <laughs> So we got to do the inverse. the way it sounds automating the mix amount so what i'm going to do is i'm going to try doing like a dynamic eq that moves up and down and attach it to the peak inverted just do something weird to see if i can like high pass dynamically It's working actually. Uh, I'm gonna find the sweet spot to set the bass. Okay, so about 30%, I guess. It's almost like directly. Okay, okay. So it doesn't work the same way. This knob is kind of weird, the peak knob. It's a bit tricky. But I just want it to stay around 150 hertz. And, um,. Another good habit you can do too is like, like, because you know, you're working in key, I can just do like F2, F3. F3 is 174, but I don't want to go that high to 174. So I don't, uh, I don't think I'm going to do the dynamic high pass that high. Whoa. 
but definitely I'll, I'll do it because I think it might turn out good doing it. it might turn out good so this base is what's feeling I'm gonna do the inverse as well I'm gonna turn this one on and link it to the peak but I think I have to do inverted this time or maybe not uh, let's do default oh it's not gonna work so if we do if we do inverted that's the default. So if we do inverted, maybe, uh, let's see here. Sometimes you gotta like do some weird stuff. Yeah, it's not gonna be a good idea. I think I wanted it to kind of sweep in, sweep the high, sweep the low, but I don't wanna really complicate it that bad. I think we should be okay. <laughs>
using notch EQ, which I've made a video about, I'm going to look for some annoying frequencies. I'm going to put a Q of 20 and I'm just going to go around here.
rather than doing the side chain compression because I removed it from this stab, I'm going to do like a manual fruity balance and just turn it off during times where I don't want it. Just like so, using the hold function. There we go. That one's a bit off-putting. It's uh, it mutes it too quickly. So what I'll do is I'll bring in the peak controller. Oh, bring in the peak controller, and we'll do a high pass right about here, right before Camel Crusher. Actually, we'll do it before the soft clipper, and we're gonna do it just kind of like the lead kind of a similar intent. So we're gonna attach it to the stab peak. And we're gonna do inverted, I believe. Yep, so now we gotta find that sweet spot. So we'll just put it like here maybe. go like uh, maybe gentle yeah it's definitely not working so sometimes the experiments just don't work well it's sounding kind of really off-putting so rather I, I should probably do stuff inside of the synth and the synth is pretty simple right now but uh, I like this more than what we had before I don't know, something about this is more snappy, the kick sounds better, especially coming to this transition. Like the lead sounds more in your face, which is what I wanted. And overall, I'm really happy with it. So guys, this is a, a wrap for this video. So we'll show you here the update that we made to the drop. Overall, just a lot of level changing and a lot of uh, changes to the drop. So here is the drop idea thus far. So that's the drop idea. It's sounding like this like big room bounce, Melbourne bounce, and I love it. I like where it's going. I really like the smoothness of the lead. It's very bouncy and has a long release, but a short reverb, kind of like a room slash small hall. So I like where it's going, guys. Uh, if you enjoy, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you smash that like button. Make sure you guys are subscribed. You hit that notification bell. And uh, I've been taking a look at your comments. Please, le please let me know if you guys have any requests any suggestions, any tutorials you want created, and I will gladly check it out and do my best. So that's a wrap for this video, guys. I will see you in this series again in a future video. And I think then we're gonna be looking at adding some percussion, some more drop elements. I want the drop to be strong before we progress into the break. Really wanna make this one like a legit song. So that's why we spent so much time changing midis and different iterations. And those midis and iterations will come useful, not only to save them, but perhaps in a like second drop, maybe do a different drop for drop two. So we'll see. So if you guys enjoyed this, make sure you guys smash that like button. I will see you guys very soon. Have a great day.